Hello, hello, Ederson Oliveira here. This is another Dean and Tip of the Week. And today we'll be talking about what if you lost the keys to the kingdom? What if you lost the super user password for your Dean and website? How can you go about getting that back? How can you get access again to the backend of the website so you can admin the website again? There's a way, don't spare. And we're gonna be talking about that next. Before I tell you about the Dean and Tip of the Week, I want to bring to your attention our sponsor, Manage.com. Why do I have them as a sponsor? Because I use them, because I trust them, because I have been running my business on their hosting environment for over seven years now. I trust them, I have used other providers, but at the end of the day, I go back to them because of their support level and their technical abilities as well. Let me tell you, no other support, no other hosting provider out there will call you on the phone to give you the status update of your ticket. Nobody will do that. And I get that from Manage.com. That's what differentiates them. It's not only the technical side, which they are very good as well, the best one in the DNA space and beyond that, but they are also very good when it comes to support, when it comes to the personal touch. So my, my recommendation to you is host with them. You will not get disappointed. They have good rates and great, great, awesome support. That's it. Let's go back to our tip of the week. So let's say that this is the DNA site that you have lost the host level password and you want to reset that. So here's how we will be going about that. We will create a new user on the site just by clicking register. So I'm gonna register a new user here. Keep in mind of this password because of course you will be using that. And I will put an email address that I will remember. And I'm gonna click register. Perfect, so a new user was created. Now, with, a, with that new user getting created, we gotta convert this recently created user into a super user. How can we do that? Well, we just have to open our database. And here, because I'm running the site locally, I have access to SQL Server Management Studio and I can open it and I can manipulate my database. I can manipulate the table. You may ask, what, Ederson, what if I don't have access to SQL Management Studio? Well, there are other ways that you can reach the database without SQL Server Management Studio, but I'm gonna cover that a little bit later. I'm connected to my database. I'm going to have a look at my database here. I know that this is the one linked to my test site. And what I will be looking for is for the users table. So let's have a look, users table here. Let's have a look at the top thousand rows. And here is my new user. So this is the host user that I have hypothetically lost the password. And this is the new user. Now, what do we have to do? We have to change the flag here, you see? Is super user, we have to set this to true for our new user. How can we do that? We just have to run a simple SQL statement. I'm just going to open up a new query and just have to look at the user ID here. It's number two. So I'm gonna set number two and I'm gonna set is super user equals to one, which means true. I'm gonna run this. And if I go back here and run this again, you're gonna see that now is super user is set to one, which means true. Second thing that I would recommend to do is going to the ASP.NET membership table. Also, I'm going to select the top thousand rows. And there is a field here that says is approved. It's set to one already, but just in case if the site is registering the user in a non-approved way, you may want to come here and check if this is not set to zero, because if it's set to zero, you need to switch that to one. To do that, very simple. There is another script. You just have to put the email address of the new user you have created, which is right here in my case. And I said I have to set is approved to one. So with that done, I will go to the site again. And now I'm going to click on login. I'm going to use the username that I have created, the password, and I'm going to click login. So here it is. 
I'm now logged in as super user. Now, before I let you go, I'm going to show you a scenario where in case you don't have access to SQL Management Studio, you can still run scripts if you have access to the site, at least via FTP. So if you do have access to FTP, you can use a little tool that I use quite a lot, which I call Easy SQL. I can just unzip this and you can upload this to your site. So I'm gonna unzip, I'm gonna show what we have here. There's a bin folder, data folder, script folder, and three ASPX files. So what I'm gonna do is just FTP this, all, all this to the root folder of your site, of your DNN site. I'm going to do this to my local site. So here is the root of my local site, my test site, and I'm gonna just paste all of that here. See, now I can go to the site, to the browser, and I can call sql.aspx. That will load up a little tool that will allow me to interact. Right here, I will be able to execute SQL statements. So instead of using SQL Management Studio, we can use straight up from here. You can access the database, let's say, select all from users. You can execute this and here is the data. Oh, and before I forget, you can download this little tool from deskpowell.com forward slash easy SQL. And that will be shared in the video notes. And if you come to use this little tool here, you will want to remove it from the site, okay? So don't leave this tool on your site, delete delete this, those three files and delete the script folder and delete as well the data folder in case you didn't have that before. And also in the bin folder, you will want to delete the, this little utility right here. That's, that's what it hooks up to called web SQL utility. If you like this DNN tip of the week and don't want to miss out anyone, subscribe.